I'm a 45-year-old man, and I have a 19-year-old daughter named Cassie with my ex-wife Mary, who is 47. Our marriage ended when Mary cheated on me and left me for another man. The situation was already devastating. But things became even more final when Mary showed up to our divorce hearing visibly pregnant with his child. At that point, I knew there was no going back for us. The betrayal was complete. After our divorce, Mary gave birth to her daughter Jane, who is now 14 years old. Mary had plans to marry Jane's father, but tragically, he died in an accident when Jane was just a few weeks old. The situation was made even worse by the fact that Jane's paternal side of the family was extremely religious. They were so ashamed of the fact that Jane's father had been involved in an affair with Mary that they completely cut ties with both her and Jane. They went as far as denying any blood relation to Jane because, in their eyes, Mary was an immoral woman who had caused a great sin. As a result, Jane grew up without any connection to her father's family and without any kind of father figure in her life. Mary doesn't have brothers, and her father is not in the picture, so Jane never had anyone to fill that role. Though it was never explicitly said, I got the sense that Mary hoped I would step in and be a father figure for Jane, since we were once married, and Jane is Cassie's half-sister. However, I made it very clear early on that I had no intention of being involved in Jane's life in that way. Mary had betrayed me and left me for someone else, and I wasn't about to let her expect me to pick up the pieces just because her life didn't work out as planned. Despite this, I've tried to be kind to Jane, mostly for Cassie's sake. I don't take Jane on family vacations or include her in things that I do with my own children, but I do allow her to come to our house when we celebrate Cassie's milestones or have special events for her. I began pulling away even more when Jane started calling me dad. It made me deeply uncomfortable, especially because Mary never stepped in to correct her. I told both of them that I wasn't Jane's father and didn't want to be seen that way, but Jane continued and Mary didn't do anything to stop her. This only made things worse for me emotionally, and I started distancing myself even more. I was honestly relieved when Mary started dating someone new because I thought this might finally allow me to step away from the situation. But when her relationship with that man didn't work out, Jane started trying once again to forge a father-daughter relationship with me. It put me in an awkward position, one I wasn't interested in being part of. This past Father's Day, my family planned a surprise lunch for me. I wasn't expecting Jane to be there, but somehow, she managed to get invited to the event. I would have preferred that she wasn't there, but I didn't want to make the situation awkward for Cassie, so I kept quiet and tried to go along with it. As part of the celebration, my children gave me cards and gifts, and when it was Jane's turn, she stood up and gave me a present. Along with the gift... She gave a heartfelt speech about how much I had meant to her and how I had shown her what it means to be a good father and a good parent. She spoke about how grateful she was to have me in her life and how much she appreciated the role I played in her upbringing. While her words were touching, I didn't feel any real emotional connection to them. To me, it felt like I was being put on the spot, expected to play a role that I had never agreed to. I accepted the gift and allowed Jane to give me a hug. But inside, I felt deeply uncomfortable with the situation. After everyone had left and the day was over, I took the gift Jane had given me and placed it in a box of items we donate to Goodwill in our basement. It wasn't that I hated the gift, but I didn't want to keep something that might give Jane the impression that I was open to being the father figure she was seeking. My wife disagreed with my decision to toss the gift. She believes that I should have kept it, even if I didn't particularly like it. Her argument is that keeping the gift wouldn't hurt anything, and it might have been a nice gesture for Jane, considering her circumstances. But from my perspective, keeping the gift would send the wrong message. I don't want Jane to think there's any chance that I'll become the father she's always wanted. I don't have the emotional capacity or the desire to fill that role, and I think it's important to be clear about that. Jane isn't my child, and I've never wanted to be her father. I feel bad for her situation, but it's not my responsibility to step in and fix it. 
I have my own family, and I want to dedicate my time and energy to them, not to a child I had no part in raising or creating. There's no biological connection between Jane and me, and I've made that clear from the beginning. While I do feel sympathy for her, I don't think that obligates me to take on a paternal role in her life, especially after everything that has happened between me and her mother. I understand that Jane is just looking for someone to fill a void in her life, but that someone isn't going to be me. I've already spoken to her about this once, and I don't feel like I should have to explain it over and over again. I've made my position clear, and I believe that should be enough. Although every attempt was made, none of those efforts seemed to resonate with Jane. She's just a kid, and she's not asking for money or material things. What she craves is for someone to show an interest in her life, to feel like someone cares. I understand that you have no legal or personal obligation to Jane, but the question remains. Is being a supportive, safe adult in her life such an unbearable burden that it's an immediate hard no? Maybe it is. I can't say for sure, but from an outside perspective, it seems that she could benefit from someone showing even a small amount of care and attention. I know you're not Nahal, but please, as someone who has been in Jane's shoes before, I'm asking you to speak to her one more time. Kindly ask her to stop calling you dad and suggest to your biological daughter that they hang out in spaces where you won't be involved. Over time, begin to distance yourself further by no longer inviting Jane to gatherings. It may hurt her initially, but in the long run, it's probably the kindest way to ease her out of your life without creating a massive amount of negativity. As she grows older, she will likely understand why you made this choice and recognize that it wasn't made out of malice. Best of luck navigating this tricky situation. You shouldn't feel like you have to take on the role of a father figure for a child whose mother left you for another man. While Jane's father's situation is tragic, it doesn't mean you're obligated to step up for her when you already have your own family to care for. Your relationship with Jane, from what I understand, is primarily based on the fact that she's friends with your daughter. You did the right thing by accepting her gift and thanking her at the moment but you're not under any obligation to keep a gift that holds no sentimental value to you. That being said, I feel for Jane. It's a sad situation, but people are only capable of doing so much. You're not her father, and your primary focus should be on your own family. It's clear you've already done a lot to not upset Jane or your daughter, but boundaries must be firmly established. Life isn't always fair, and we don't always get to choose the circumstances we're dealt. It sounds like the situation could have been addressed years ago, but unfortunately, it wasn't. Now, on to the next scenario. Am I the a-hole for kicking someone out of my birthday party for bringing an unwanted gift? Here's the backstory. I, 30F, broke up with my ex, Tony, 32M, about eight months ago. I was pretty sure he was cheating on me with one of his friends, Tammy. He denied it. But even if he wasn't physically cheating, it was clear that he had emotionally checked out of our relationship and had feelings for her. Sure enough, after we broke up, he quickly started dating Tammy. Since then, I've tried to move on with my life. I'm doing my best to be mature about the whole situation. But for some reason, both Tony and Tammy won't let me be. Tammy has been sending me memes, inviting me to things, and trying to engage with me despite my clear disinterest. When I ignore her or tell her no, Tony swoops in and accuses me of being mean to her without cause. To be clear, I'm not questioning whether I'm the a-hole compared to them because I know I'm not. They're being absolutely absurd. My question lies in what happened recently. Last weekend, I hosted a small get-together at a bar to celebrate my 30th birthday with some close friends. Somehow, word got out and Tammy found out about the party. She asked if she could attend, to which I immediately said no. Tony, of course, gave me grief for that, but I stood my ground and blocked both of them on all social media to cut off their incessant contact. Before the party, I told my friends, if Tony or Tammy show up, they're not welcome, and I'll ask them to leave. My friends understood the situation, so I wasn't too worried. Tony and Tammy didn't show up, but guess what did? A personalized gift from Tammy, delivered by one of my other friends, Roger. 
Nobody else brought gifts since we were just meeting at a bar for drinks. Roger handed me the gift, saying it was an olive branch, and I just lost it. I threw the gift in the trash and told Roger to leave. I was so furious it took me a moment to calm down, but Roger left in a huff. The rest of the night went well enough, but I'm still upset at Roger for thinking it was okay to bring me something from Tammy after everything I've been through with her and Tony. Now, I'm wondering, am I the a-hole for rejecting the gift and asking Roger to leave? Frankly, I'm shocked that Tammy and Tony can't seem to leave me alone. What kind of person forces a relationship on someone who clearly wants nothing to do with them? And Roger, what was he thinking? It was extremely foolish of him to get involved in the situation and bring that gift, knowing full well how I feel about the whole mess. In hindsight, maybe I was a little harsh with Roger, but the situation with Tony and Tammy has been incredibly frustrating. Roger should have known better than to bring a gift on their behalf. And honestly, it feels like Tony and Tammy are trying to force me into some kind of fake friendship just to save face with our mutual friends. To be honest, if they keep pushing, I might consider legal action to keep them out of my life altogether. But for now, I just want them and everyone else to respect my boundaries. It would have been so much better if he had given you the gift after the party, or better yet, on a completely different day. He could have let you know ahead of time that these people had reached out to him and wanted to send a gift along with him, asking if you would be comfortable with that arrangement. It really does seem like he was being used by them, as if they put him in a position where he couldn't say no, and he just went along with it. He didn't even try to stand up for himself. But he could have done more. He could have found a way around it. Maybe some kind of loophole that would have made the situation less uncomfortable for you. You're bringing up a good point. And honestly, I hadn't thought much about how Roger might have been pressured into agreeing to their request. He's not a bad guy, but he's the kind of person who tends to get swept up in this idea of wanting everyone to get along, no matter what. I can definitely see how they could have convinced him with something like, We just want to make amends with Opie. Please, give this to her, so we can all put the past behind us. In his mind... He probably thought he was doing something to help everyone, but it ended up hurting you instead. Looking back on all this, I know I need to talk to Roger about what happened and explain why it hurt me so much. I hope he'll listen and understand where I'm coming from. A few days ago, I had a big argument with my mom. I'm 21 and my brother is 17. Since we were kids, my mom has always had a clear favorite, my brother. She doesn't even try to hide it. In fact, she proudly tells people that he's her favorite. She has coddled him his whole life, to the point where it's really unhealthy. Even now, as a teenager, she invades his privacy by checking his computer and phone without permission. She'll walk into his room without knocking and, believe it or not, she still tries to hand-feed him. He's almost an adult, and it's gotten to the point where he's absolutely miserable about it. The latest incident happened during a date my brother had with a girl. We live in an area where COVID restrictions have loosened up, so it's possible to go out to places like cafes as long as you follow certain guidelines. My brother was excited about the date and even told our mom about it beforehand. But instead of just letting him go, she decided to follow him. She snuck into the cafe and sat in a booth nearby, pretending to hide so he wouldn't see her. My brother noticed her pretty quickly, and it completely ruined the date for him. At one point, he and his date went to the bathroom, and he later told me that he only did it because he wanted to get a moment of privacy away from our mom's constant surveillance. He even admitted he was hoping to steal a kiss while they were out of her sight. But that didn't last long. My mom followed them into the bathroom, barged in, and physically separated them. She then started yelling at the girl, accusing her of being a bad influence and ruining her baby. Things got so bad that the girl completely humiliated and freaked out, called our entire family a bunch of creeps and stormed out. My mom, though, was completely unfazed by the girl leaving. She turned her attention back to my brother and started doting on him, asking him if the girl had hurt him and if he was okay, as if he was a small child who couldn't handle himself. My brother, who is usually really calm and composed in public, was so embarrassed that he called me in tears, begging me to come pick him up. When I got to the cafe, 
I found my mom standing outside with my brother, trying to keep him from leaving with me. She kept insisting that only she could calm her baby down, even though he wasn't upset in the way she thought. He was just angry and embarrassed by how she was treating him like a 10-year-old. I finally told her that he didn't need to be calmed down and that she was the one embarrassing him. My brother came home with me, and we spent the evening talking. He told me that this wasn't the first time she had done something like this, but it was the worst, and he doesn't even want to go back home because of it. Since then, my mom has been calling and texting nonstop, saying that I had no right to embarrass her in public and that I was out of line. Even my dad has sided with her, saying that I handled the situation poorly and that I should have let her manage things her way. I refuse to apologize because I don't feel like I did anything wrong. But now I'm starting to wonder if I overstepped by getting involved and if I should have handled things differently. It's not about being dramatic. Someone truly needs to intervene and help your brother establish some boundaries with your emotionally overbearing mother. Emotional incest where a parent leans on their child inappropriately for emotional support, can be damaging, and it seems you're in a position to help. You might feel like this is a lot to take on, and that's understandable. But the longer it goes unaddressed, the worse the situation can get for your brother. One of the responsibilities of an older sibling is to protect the younger one, and sometimes that means protecting them from your own parents. Your brother is still young and likely doesn't fully realize how unhealthy this dynamic with your mother is. To help him, you could suggest that whenever he wants to go out or spend time away from home, you can act as a chaperone. You can tell your parents that you and your brother are just hanging out, which is technically true. Meanwhile, you'll ensure that your mother doesn't follow or intrude on his personal time. This can help give your brother some breathing room until he turns 18, but he might not appreciate it at first. He may resist because of the control your mother has over him, but he'll thank you later when he understands the importance of boundaries. Unfortunately, for now, you will still have to return him to your parents since he's underage. However, once he turns 18 in five months, he'll have more freedom to make his own decisions. In a similar story, Someone was wondering if they were wrong for favoring one of their twin nephews over the other. This person's sister, who has four teenage boys, regularly sent the two younger fraternal twins, Alex and Brian, over to their place. The problem was that Alex was the clear favorite child of their mother, which everyone was aware of. Alex fit the typical good kid mold, smart, charismatic, and well-liked. Brian, on the other hand, was quieter and less confident but still a good kid. However, Alex had a mean streak, often tormenting Brian, both emotionally and socially. The aunt noticed this behavior, from Alex daring Brian to drink something disgusting under the threat of being excluded from their friend group, to making hurtful comments about Brian's appearance and intelligence. Worse, Alex had been vandalizing Brian's belongings and spreading rumors at school. Yet, their mother refused to punish Alex or seek professional help for him, dismissing it as boys being boys. This left the aunt feeling helpless, as she tried to balance the blatant favoritism by catering more to Brian when they were at her house. The aunt would let Brian pick movies and meals, but every time she intervened on his behalf, Alex would get angrier. Brian even started asking her to stop defending him because Alex would retaliate when they went home. The aunt was torn. She didn't want to abandon Brian, but she also didn't want to make his life harder. At the end of the day, this situation shows how damaging favoritism can be when it's left unchecked. While the aunt's heart was in the right place, trying to balance the favoritism by favoring Brian more wasn't solving the problem. Instead, it was giving Alex more ammunition to torment his brother when they weren't at her house. The solution wasn't to match favoritism with favoritism, but to address it at its source. The mother's unwillingness to acknowledge and discipline Alex's behavior. The advice given was to document Alex's actions, present them to the mother, and if she refused to act, escalate the situation to authorities or school personnel who could intervene. Continuing the current approach was only exacerbating the problem, as Brian had specifically asked her to stop. Sometimes... Even with the best intentions, 
Our efforts to help can inadvertently make things worse if we're not careful to consider the full impact on the people we're trying to support. In both situations, it's important to listen to the person who is being affected, in this case, your brother or Brian. Even if it feels like you're doing what's right, if they ask you to stop, you have to respect that and find other ways to help without worsening their situation.